In today's video, I'll help you choose the best vertical support for your plants. Hi everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I love growing climbing plants and when it comes to providing them with support, we have many options available. But when it comes to choosing the best option, there are a few things that we need to consider. First and foremost, we need to consider the plant, we need to consider the conditions that you're growing the plant in, and we need to consider you, the plant parent. How much effort are you willing to put into this hobby? Based on this criteria, we know that there's not gonna be one answer that's gonna suit everybody because we're all different in our approach to plant care. We all have different conditions and we might also grow different plants. However, I wanted to come up with a, somewhat of a guideline that helps people make the best possible decision early on in their plant journey. And to visualize this, I came up with this heat map. It's basically a map that compares five different types of supports. We've got open moss poles, plastic back moss poles, cocoa choir poles, a veggie trellis, and a piece of wood. Now we're gonna assess these five different supports across 15 different criteria, such as aesthetics, functionality, ease of watering, ease of extending, and so on. And I'm just using a traffic light system to basically indicate whether or not this type of support meets that criteria or not. Green means this is good, orange means this is okay, and red means this is not really something I would recommend. On that note, this is 100% just based on my experiences that I've made over the last four to five years of growing climbing plants. You could live somewhere completely different, you could grow different plants in different conditions and come up with different recommendations. I'm just here to speak from my experience, so keep that in mind. All right, let me put on my glasses and get into this heat map. But actually, before we look into this heat map in a little bit more detail, this is obviously for climbing plants. Not all plants are climbers. I predominantly grow climbing aeroids, but there's also aeroids that don't climb. For example, alocasias, they grow in clusters and they won't need any of these supports. Some philodendrons can be crawlers. They're also called terrestrial plants and they just grow on the forest floor so they do not they do not climb in nature meaning we also don't need to worry about a support stake in our indoor journey at the end of the day we're always aiming at growing plants as closely as possible to their natural growth pattern so these plants around me monsteras epipremnums another monstera philodendron Actually, another Monstera. Syngonium, oh, another Monstera. <laughs> Do love my Monsteras, clearly, but mainly Monsteras, Philodendron, Samanthurium, Syngoniums, and so on. Um, those are climbing aeroids. Those are the ones that I like to grow, but there's also other climbing plants. So some climbing vines, Hoyas can climb, and so on. But first and foremost, Everything discussed in this video is around climbing plants. So if you're not sure what the growth pattern of your plant is like, I would always just recommend Googling a mature version of your plant. So if you Google mature alocasia, for example, you'll see that this alocasia isn't climbing higher and higher and higher. The alocasia is just growing bushier and larger, but it's not actually climbing. So the whole reason why we are adding a support into our pot indoors is to make mimic a tree that these plants would climb up on in nature or a vine that they would climb up on in nature. I wanted to quickly look at all of these supports in a little bit more detail as well so we're all aware of what we're talking about. So first one is my moss pulse that I like to make myself. We're going to refer to them as the open style moss pulse going forward. They are basically just a wire mesh filled with moss and that is it, so very, very simple. Secondly, we've got plastic back moss poles, like this one over here. So I've got a plastic backing and the mesh at the front and it's just filled with moss. So very similar to the open style moss poles, just that there is a plastic backing uh, on one side. I don't have a cocoa choir pole over here because 
spoiler alert, they're useless. <laughs> I stopped using them about four years ago and I didn't really want to purchase one just for the sake of this video. So I'll just insert a photo so you know what I'm referring to. But it's basically usually a PVC pipe or a wooden stake with some cocoa choir around it. Cocoa choir is like long fibers kind of uh, that come from coconut. Um, very poor water retention though. Next up, we've got a trellis. So something really simple like this over here. This one was for veggies. I used this to grow some tomatoes during summer. They obviously come in different sizes, different shapes, but basically when I refer to a trellis, I just refer to usually something made from plastic or metal that it just kind of gives it vertical support. And lastly, a piece of bark or wood. This one over here is iron bark and it's, I've heard it's the best to use because it doesn't rot. For the sake of today, I'm just gonna uh, refer to it as just a wooden plank. I'm kind of grouping a planks of wood and iron bark in, into one category for the sake of today. So basically just some support made out of wood. So those are the five supports that I have personally used in my journey. So I feel confident talking about those five to you and assessing them across the different 15 categories. Let's start off with my favorite. Let's start off with the one that I've been using from the beginning, which is open style moss poles. First criteria is being a vertical support. Yes, all five of these are vertical supports. That's the entire purpose of this video. So got a big green tick for this one. But moss poles aren't just a vertical support for the plant. Moss poles are actually an extension of the pot. The moss that I put within the wire mesh is a growing medium. The idea is to keep the moss moist at all times and I also provide nutrients via the moss. So the moss and the moss pole in itself is a growing medium. The plant attaches onto the moss pole, grows roots into the moss pole and then builds a huge root system in and around the moss pole. So really the moss pole is an extension of the pot. If you look at it, this plant for example is in a very small pot but 50% of the volume uh, of this root mass would be within the moss pole in itself. These big plants over here on either side of mine, they're just in 20 centimeter pots, but they're on my open style moss poles and they have a huge root system in and around the moss pole. So a big green tick on it being an extension of the pot rather than just a support. You can use moss alternatives with these open style moss poles. You could, for example, use a chunky aeroid mix, some cocoa chips, uh, some orchid bark. However, with these open style moss poles, oh, hello, Brad, are you joining? With these open style moss poles, it can get very, very messy if you're using anything but moss. Moss can flake off a little bit at the beginning, but usually that settles down within a couple of weeks. My concern over here is that it would be really messy every time you move the plant if you have anything but moss in the pole because there's such a large surface area and just things would fall out. But also the watering experience would be very, very messy because orchid bark or cocoa chips doesn't absorb water as quickly as moss would. So when you water it, water might just drip all over it through the gaps in between the orchid bark and so on. So it is possible to put any growing medium in this metal structure, right? That wire mesh, you can fill it with any growing medium and turn it into an extension of the pot. But with the open style moss pile, I'm just a bit concerned about the mess. So I'm giving this a yellow. I touched on this, the whole concept is that we are watering the moss pollen, truly treating it like an extension of the pot. So I have a really easy technique of watering my moss poles, which is just taking a water bottle and flipping it upside down and letting gravity do the rest. So the ease of watering for these open style moss poles is definitely a green tick because it's as easy as it can be when it comes to watering a vertical support. When it comes to the water retention, however, the moss pole is challenged in the surface area that it has. So I mentioned before it has a large surface area because well there's only that little bit of mesh that's holding it all in place. The larger the surface area the faster it will dry out especially if the moss pole is situated in a fairly uh, dry environment. If you have it in a greenhouse for example with really high humidity then this might not be a concern but if you're growing indoors and specifically you know that your relative humidity indoors isn't the greatest then this is definitely something I would consider. So water retention is a yellow for me. 
On the flip side though, that large surface area ensures that there's great aeration and plants love aeration, roots seek oxygen, so these moss poles actually provide great aeration for these roots. And with the aeration also comes a reduced risk of any mold issues and or fungus nets. The plant can very easily attach itself, roots seek moisture, so if you're keeping the moss pole moist and the plant is happy and healthy and growing, the plant will find its own way up the moss pole and attach itself. You can use the mesh as like a little grid to kind of pin the stem where you want it to go as well, so there is some aesthetic aspect to it as well. But first and foremost, the moss pole in itself, if the plant is growing in the right conditions and the plant is growing, the plant will attach itself to the moss pole, it won't require your assistance. Now, I mentioned that the plant is growing up the moss pole, growing a huge root system within the moss pole and that then unlocks full propagation benefits. By the time the plant reaches the top of the moss pole, each node has already created a root system within the moss pole, so I could now chop in between every single node and every plant is already air layered. So it's basically a perpetual air layering process while growing the plant in the first place. So propagation benefits for open star moss poles are definitely a green tick which then very closely relates to the chop and extend process. The chop and extend process is where I take a full plant, so these big plants on the left and right of me over here for example, they're on two of these moss poles that are stacked on top of each other. I can then chop them in half, take the top, pot it back up and re-extend it. And that chop and extend process is facilitated by the root system within the moss pole. The plant hardly suffers any shock as a result of the big cut because we're taking a cutting that has a root system in proportion to the size of the cutting because well every single node has already been air layered from the beginning. So the chop and extend process is definitely possible through this uh, open style moss pile. When it comes to the stability of the support, I actually give this a green tick and hear me out on this one. We're just talking about the support. Of course, at some stage you could grow a ginormous plant on that support and then the plant in itself might make it unstable, but that's subject to all of the poles. When it comes to the open style moss poles, however, because you can make them yourself, you can choose how thick of a surface area or how thick of a base this pole should have. When you pot it up, you can also pot up this pole to the very bottom of the pot. So this pole isn't just stuck in there in hindsight. I pot it up to the very bottom of the pot. And the pole in itself is quite light actually. So these poles can stand up by themselves before I even pot them up. And then when I pot them up, the, po the pot in itself just gives it a little, uh, the pot in itself gives it a larger surface area. So. While yes, they might look a little bit unstable, these open style moss poles are actually very stable, especially if you consider that they're also a cylinder, which is just a really structurally sound uh, shape in the first place. One of the biggest advantages of these open style moss poles is your ability to grow 360 degrees around the moss pole. This plant over here, my El Salvador, and you probably can't really see it anymore. There's heaps of plants around me today. <laughs> um, but this plant is actually growing 360 degrees around the moss pole. So it could be a plant that I want to grow in the middle of a room or over here half of the plant is facing the window which obviously it wants to face because that's where the light is coming from. The other half is facing into the room and I want both sides to look nice. If I'm in my garden and I want to look inside, I want to see a nice display side. If I'm inside, I also want to see nice plants uh, and nice leaves. So this is a plant where I'm taking advantage of the full moss pole, 360 degrees around it because I want to create a lush display. A lot of my plants are wedged into a corner or up against a wall. So in that instance, I don't actually utilize the ability to grow 360 degrees around the moss pole, but technically it's possible, which is definitely something we need to keep in mind. Now when it comes to aesthetics, I suppose that is at all times personal preference. I personally don't mind the moss poles, but I remember four to five years ago when I first started getting them, my I didn't like them as much. I think by now I'm just very used to the look and I don't mind it, but I think it looks fairly organic. You know, it's just brown or eventually with algae buildup it turns green, so it looks organic. And I suppose the goal over here is to grow a really nice large plant that covers the entire moss pole. And at the end of the day, these moss poles have great functionality so that your plants can grow pretty large pretty quickly. But 
from an aesthetics perspective, if I'm just judging the pole by itself, there's obviously nicer options out there. So I have to give it a yellow. When it comes to the ease of acquisition, I would give this one a red because you most likely have to make them yourself. If you buy these poles online, if you buy a moss pole online, it's usually not made from moss. You usually get a coke acquire pole, uh, which just doesn't have the same functionality. So my recommendation would be to make it yourself on a positive note whatever you do yourself is usually very cost effective as well so you can scale it up and make a lot of these poles by buying the mesh the moss and so on in bulk but you have to put a little bit of effort into making them yourself but I also have a tutorial on how I make them which of course is linked in the description and then there is the effort required in maintaining this pole the whole idea of this pole is it being an extension of the pot so as a result of that you do need to treat the support just like a pot and also stay on top of watering Due to the large surface area and gravity, this moss pole is obviously going to dry out much quicker than a pot would. This type of support definitely requires the most effort in maintaining, so I have to give this a red as well. So, considering these 15 aspects in relation to this Open Star moss pole, I would personally recommend an Open Star moss pole if you're willing to put in the effort to make and maintain these moss poles. If you know that you can't keep the moss pole moist, there's no point in even attempting this in the first place. You will just end up with a normal trellis if you don't utilize the actual water capacity or water retention capacity of the moss. So if you want to be laissez-faire, you want to be hands-off, you want to neglect your plants, you might not be able to look after them for three weeks at a time or something like that, then open star moss pots are probably not the support for you to choose. If however you are very committed, you're like I want to put in the effort as long as I get rewarded with results, then I cannot recommend these enough. I really love the functionality of these and I think they're the more aesthetically pleasing um, option while maintaining the functionality. I recommend this for people that are pretty hands-on, they want to grow aeroids and they want to grow them as large and as fast as possible because you have all of these propagation benefits so you don't experience any setbacks when you have to chop the plant and you will have to chop the plant when you grow plants indoors because they will just outgrow your space. They are my preferred option because they enable me to grow all of my plants pretty quickly and pretty large while also looking nice and I can just make them myself fairly cost effectively if I compare that to having to purchase supports. So they are definitely my favorite but I can understand they're not everybody's cup of tea specifically if you don't have enough time available or if you're growing in really really dry environments where they can just dry out way too quickly and keep you too busy. Which is a good segue into the second type of support the plastic backed support. Now I use Grow Vertical which is a company um, a local company company over here that my friend Tim is running and I linked them in the description and I've got a discount code and there is international shipping as well. However, I'm just using them as an example. There are hundreds of plastic backed moss poles out there these days. I feel like every day on Instagram I get a new company recommended that does similar things. So there's many many options that come in different sizes. I have them in like this size over here with like this eco green backing that is from recycled plastic. I have this smaller size over here with the oblique that I showed you before. I have them in really large for my big Adansonia for example but at the end of the day I'm just referring to a moss pile that is not open so you don't have all too much moss exposed but half of it or three quarters or whatever is covered in a plastic sheet. First couple of criteria pretty easy. Yes, it's a vertical support and, and yes, because we can fill it with a growing medium, it is also an extension of the pot. So the exact same noise for the plastic back moss pile uh, that I had for the uh, open star moss pole. Where the plastic back moss pole really has its advantages it is when it comes to having alternatives for moss. I know moss can be fairly expensive and it might not be available where you live so these plastic back moss poles can easily be used with moss alternatives. So for example over here I have a aeroid mix in here. Now that aeroid mix is pretty fine so you can probably see if I squeeze a little bit. I'm already making a mess because smaller particles can easily fall out 
but with the plastic backing that is reduced as much as we can. So I have used these plastic back moss pots with aeroid mix, with just bark, with just cocoa chips and all of them work. However, my personal preference is moss. I'm having the easiest time watering it and my plants also seem to like it the most. But it is certainly the most useful of all supports when it comes to finding moss alternatives. When it comes to watering the exact same process I can also just flip a bottle upside down and let the water slowly drain through the moss or moss alternative. Keep in mind if you use a moss alternative it is still a messier watering experience but the plastic backing kind of keeps everything in, in check. Another huge advantage of these plastic back moss pots, and I suppose that is why most people prefer them over the open style moss pots, is the water retention. The plastic backing drastically reduces the surface area of the moss pole, so the water retention of that moss pole is much higher. So that's a really big consideration if you're trying to grow these plants in lower humidity environments. My humidity averages around 60%, so I'm fine with the open star moss pots that don't dry it all too quickly, but if you're growing in maybe 30% humidity, I would highly recommend the plastic backing. On the flip side though, that means that the plastic bag moss pole has less airflow and less airflow can technically cause fungal issues or fungus nets. Now I personally haven't had that issue even with my plastic bag moss poles, but I know about based on the questions that I get quite frequently, I know that this is definitely something that people struggle with. People struggle with airflow as it is in an indoor setting and you then closing up a lot of your moss pile makes that issue even worse. Just something to consider, be a little bit more conservative with the watering when you have a plastic style moss pile, but I suppose that also suits people that don't want to be too hands on with their plants at all times. On that note, I also seen a lot of people kind of taking the open style moss pile and then putting cling wrap around it basically has the same effect but it just looks a little worse. Very concerned about mold when it comes to these cling wrapped moss poles. Um, airflow is not a bad thing but I understand that it keeps you busy. The plant can also attach itself. These plants just naturally grow up and they'll find their way into the growing medium especially if you keep the growing medium moist. See, roots are attracted to moisture so again Again, you don't usually need to do anything to kind of fix the plant to the pole. Now, because the plant can attach itself and then grow roots into the growing medium that we filled the pole with, all of the propagation benefits are the exact same as we experienced with the open moss pole. Same goes for the chop and extend benefits. If anything, we could say that the plastic bag moss poles have a further advantage over the open style moss poles because any root that goes into the pole will be funneled by the plastic backing into the pot. So further encourages root growth Whereas with the open star moss poles, sometimes a root might just come back out the other end. Sorry, Brad. A root might just come out the other end. On that Monstera, it's pretty crazy. I'll show you with B-roll. Um, so we could say that the plastic back moss pole with the funneling effect uh, kind of further optimizes root health and root growth and as such actually has even more propagation benefits. But the principle is the same between both of them. We're establishing a root system within the moss pile. We're basically air layering the plant as we grow it up the moss pile so that by the time it comes to chopping it, whether that's for a chop and extend or whether that's for propagation purposes, uh, we can rely on the existing root system. We don't need to root the plant first. The plant can just keep growing straight away. These plastic bag moss poles can of course also be extended, but it is also subject to what kind of pole you are purchasing. I have seen one that was a little bit let's say alarming, I haven't tested it myself, but I found one online where the pole didn't just stack into each other, they kind of twisted into each other, which I think will be a bit of an issue when it comes to performing a chop and extend or propagating a plant later on, because you would essentially have to twist the plant around and twist all of the roots within the pole. Um, so keep that in mind when you make a decision on purchasing a moss pole, but it also depends on whether you're ever actually aiming at extending that pole or not. Maybe you want to keep it short. But technically, yes, you can extend them, but just keep that in mind at the time of purchasing the pole already. Is there the ability to extend it? And if there is, how? 
When it comes to stability, the exact same applies. They're actually also really light because plastic doesn't weigh all too much and I put them all the way to the bottom of the pot so they have great stability. However, I personally found the half moon um, shape to be less stable than a cylinder. So they don't stand by themselves as well as the round moss piles. But once you pot them up, I haven't noticed any issues when it comes to stability. But of course, also depends on what you fill it with. If you fill it with a heavier medium, like bark, for example, it might get a little more unstable compared to a really light medium like moss. Now, probably the biggest downsides of these plastic bag moss poles are the next couple of criteria. Well, first of all, because half of it is plastic, you can't grow a plant all around 360 around the moss pole. You can really only grow them on one side, which at times is actually preferred. If you have this sitting against a wall or hang them against my greenhouse and so on, you don't want the plant to grow on the other side. You actually like the plastic backing in that instance. So that's good, but keep that in mind. You don't have the ability to create nice lush displays to go in the center of a table or the center of a room, for example. And of course, where we have a window like this, for example, the plant will want to face the light. So I should really position the leaves facing this way, which means that the plastic backing would face into the room. So when I'm inside, I'm just going to look at plastic basically. So when it comes to aesthetics, that's probably the biggest downside. We are looking at plastic sheets essentially, which just doesn't look as nice. I think this more natural look of the moss pole, especially once it gets a bit of algae buildup, is aesthetic much more pleasing and I suppose that aesthetic aspect and aesthetics is a huge driving factor in my plant collection that is why my personal preference is still sitting with the open star moss pulse ease of acquisition super easy I've seen them even on Timu these days on Amazon I think there I could probably name at least 20 different uh, stores that have a similar product available. So I don't think this is news to anybody. I think we've all seen these sort of plastic backed moss poles around. There's obviously some small differences, but at the end of the day, as long as it's a vertical extension that we can fill with a growing medium, they all should do okay, let's say, right? So it should be pretty easy to get your hands on one, but it still requires a bit of effort in maintaining that. You're still supposed to keep the medium that you fill the pole with moist at all times and so on. So there is still some, um, there's still some effort required when it comes to um, continuous maintenance of that pole. Um, but it won't require as much effort as the open style moss pole because it just has better water retention. That concludes the plastic back moss pile. So obviously there's more commonalities between open style and plastic uh, back moss piles than there are differences. At the end of the day, the thing that they've both got in common is that they're a vertical extension of the pot and they're filled with a growing medium. The real advantage of the plastic back moss pole is that they're less effort when it comes to maintaining them because of the higher water retention and the ability to use moss alternatives. So if you have less time available to water or you're growing in a really dry environment or you don't want to use moss, then I think a plastic back pole is a safer option for you. But of course, you need to be okay with the aesthetic downsides to them. I have started using a lot of plastic back poles, but I mainly use them in spots where I know that the plastic backing won't bother me. Or for example, outdoors, I have, um, because there's more airflow, harsher conditions, so they dry out quicker. I also started kind of making a hybrid. I started making these round moss poles, but just put a plastic sheet on, in, on the inside uh, when I make them so that they still have that water retention, but I kind of prefer this round style pole aesthetically. So it's kind of like a bit of a compromise. Anyway, all righty, let's move on to number three, the Coca Choir support. And I don't have one here, but I'll pop in a photo. Yes, it is a vertical support, it is a vertical structure. However, Cocoa Choir is not a growing medium. Cocoa Choir will not absorb water and nutrients, meaning that, meaning that the plant will not grow roots into the Cocoa Choir. It might have some aerial roots and it might somewhat anchor itself to the Cocoa Choir pole, but it won't grow water roots into the pole that can then absorb water and nutrients. So we're not contributing to the root system over here we're really just giving it that vertical
vertical support. So green tick for vertical support, but it is a harsh red when it comes to extension of the pot. Now, because it's not an extension of the pot, we don't need to worry about moss alternatives. There is no alternatives. We're not using a growing medium in that pole and we don't need to water and we don't need to worry about ease of watering because you're not supposed to water these cocoa choir poles. Water retention of that cocoa choir is absolute like non-existent and I suppose that's why we're not looking at it as an extension of the pot. However, Great airflow, right? I mean, the air can very easily circulate around that coca choir and so on. So it might encourage some aerial roots over there. These aerial roots can also help the plant kind of anchor itself. Yes, the plant can attach itself to the coca choir pole, but usually only when you grow it in fairly high humidity environments when the aerial roots are really encouraged to grow and uh, attach themselves. Um, and even if they do kind of grow some aerial roots, you can usually just very easily pull them out of the cocoa choir again. Um, so most of the time when I see people grow on cocoa choir poles, they still then further have to actually secure the plant to the pole using like Velcro or something like that. Um, Propagation benefits are very, very minimal because, well, it is not an extension of the pot. So each root won't, each node won't have a root system by the time we need to perform a chop. However, you could air layer the plant before you do the chop. So you can use little like bags of moss or like, you know, put a bit of moss around the node, wrap it in cling wrap, let that root system extend, expand and then do the chop. But if you're going through that effort, why wouldn't you have grown it on a moss pole in the first place, right? Kind of defeats the purpose, uh, in, in my opinion, and looks extremely hideous having all of these clunks of moss everywhere. But um, each to their own. So the pole in itself has no propagation benefits, but I gave it a yellow because, well, you can air layer while it's on that pole as well. But anyway. These cocoa choir poles can also be extended, but it depends on what sort of pole you purchased in the first place. When I, I, I spoke about cocoa choir poles before and I mentioned as a negative that you can't extend them and people in the comment section were like, well, why, why wouldn't you extend them? Just put another one into the old one. And it turns out that I think overseas, these cocoa choir poles are made from a PVC pipe in the middle that is just hollow and then the cocoa choir around it. Over here, the ones I always uh, purchased back in the days, like five years ago, they had a solid wooden stake in the middle. So you couldn't really just chuck another one on top of it. So maybe keep that in mind by the time of purchasing the Coca Choir Pole. Does it have like a PVC pipe in the middle where you can just chuck the next one in there? Or is it solid wood and you can't extend it? So this one gets a yellow for me, subject to the coca choir pole that you purchased. The chop and extend method really doesn't work with a coca choir pole. You have to air layer it and then chop it or chop it and then propagate it and then uh, pot it back up and then re-extend it and so on. But look, the whole idea of the chop and extend process is that you're chopping it, you're potting it up, you're extending it straight away and you don't have to propagate it further and you don't go through setbacks. If you have to propagate a plant, the plant is going to focus on growing roots first. If the plant focuses on roots, then it won't grow leaves instead, right? So you can technically do a chop and extend, but it won't actually follow the chop and extend principles and it won't get you the result of continuous maturity of your plants. Now, when it comes to the stability of these poles, it obviously also depends on how large that pole is. But the main issue I have with the stability of coca choir poles is that you don't pot them all the way to the bottom of the pot. They usually come with like a little stake, right? So the bottom, I don't know, 10, 15 centimeters of the coca choir pole don't have the coca choir on it. They're just a PVC or wood. And then you just chuck it in there in hindsight that's never going to be stable. With these poles, the pole and the pot, if anything gets unstable, it's the whole thing. This whole thing will fall over, but the pole will never fall out of the pot. Whereas with the coca choir poles, I feel like the pole is very likely to just fall out of the pot, not the whole thing falling over, if that makes sense. So I don't like the stability of these coca choir poles and it's to do with the little stake that you put in rather than potting it up properly. However, you have the ability to grow plants on all sides of it. So it's still 360 degrees. And I think the aesthetics aren't all too bad either. It's kind of very natural looking, very organic looking, right? Like it's not ugly. Um, 
but it's also not that pretty. They're really readily available, so there's a high ease of acquisition. You can just buy it pretty much anywhere at any garden center, and there is no effort in you maintaining it. The only effort you really got is you need to maybe help your plant actually attach to it by you know kind of tying it to the coca choir pole but there is no effort required in keeping it moist and so on so it's very easy to use uh, going forward i personally wouldn't use coca choir poles but i can understand that if you maybe grow a monstera deliciosa so a really hardy plant that easily grows aerial roots and you don't really need to optimize the root system further because it's roots like crazy anyway so you don't want to establish a root system within the extension of the pot if it's maybe a plant that grows fairly slowly so with small internodal spacing so you don't have to worry about extending chopping extending eventually propagating it and so on or it might be a future concern in like three four years time or something like that if you're growing in low humidity environments if you travel a lot and you can't water your plants much you know then maybe a monstera deliciosa in a more water retentive mix that you might only have to water once a month with a coca choir pole will be good. I probably should have mentioned it at the beginning, but first and foremost, you know, the potential for your plants to grow will always be in the conditions. So your plants can still mature on any of these supports if you provide the correct conditions, specifically light. So the coca choir pole is not going to prevent your plant from uh, maturing. It's more that if you grow it in nice conditions and you got it to mature, it's also going to grow pretty fast. And what are you going to do once it outgrows the coca choir pole? You're going to have a massive setback. So the the disadvantages of the coca choir pole really just going to crystallize in the long run because you can't do propagations that easily. You can't do chop and extend processes and so on. But it's still a solid option for somebody who's not willing to put in all too much effort into maintaining or making these poles and somebody who's not necessarily aiming at shooting the lights out. <sighs> Alrighty, next up we've got the trellis over here and of course this is just again one example of a trellis. There's many many different tre trellises, tre trelli, I don't know, <laughs> out there. Um, and yes, they are a vertical support, but they are certainly not an extension of the pot because, well, metal or plastic or whatever this trellis might be made out of is not a growing medium. So nothing is going to attach to this and absorb water and nutrients from the metal. Which obviously means that, well, the ease of using a moss alternative or the ease of watering is irrelevant because you don't need to do that because it has no water retention in the first place. However, great airflow. <laughs> I like to point that one out as a positive. Now, depending on the plant that you're growing, a plant could attach itself to it, like a Discoria discala, for example, and I pop in a little time lapse on over there. You can see how it really kind of just swings itself around and attaches to this trellis. But I'm assuming you came here for aeroids. An aeroid will not attach itself to this sort of trellis. You can maybe kind of twist it around so it mechanically kind of like is stuck on the trellis, but it won't attach itself like it would attach itself to a tree in nature using its roots, right? Because the roots can't attach to this, uh, the, to plastic or to metal like that. Um, yeah, I mean, technically it could, but you would need to grow it in like really, really, really high humidity. So, most likely, if you're using a trellis to grow an aeroid, you will probably have to use some sort of twine or velcro or something to help out your plant uh, attach itself. Jesus, I feel like I'm in a prison here. <laughs> like, get me out of here! <laughs> um, now, of course, because we're not growing in a growing medium, there's no propagation benefits. You can extend the trellis by just having another trellis on top. I did that with my Discoria Scala, for example. It's just two trellises stuck on top of each other, but also obviously depends on the trellis that you've chosen. But yeah, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to, to do that or kind of, you know, even create your own. You just need a piece of wire, like a thick, thick piece of wire. Right? There is no thing as such as chop and extend uh, method with a trellis because, well, again, we don't have the propagation benefits in the first place, but you could technically air layer your plant as well. But then 
if you're wanting to air layer your why wouldn't you just grow it on a moss pole in the first place? Now the stability is questionable as well because again over here you would just stake these things into the pot they might not even go all the way to the bottom of the pot and they have a quite small surface area so it would be easy to wiggle around right like this doesn't stand up by itself so it requires the pot um, but because you're not watering it it's also not as heavy so Again, probably depends on the trellis that you're choosing, but fundamentally, I don't like adding a trellis or support into a pot in hindsight. I like potting up my support properly to the bottom of the pot, which these are just not designed to do that with. Now, the biggest advantage of these sort of trellis is definitely that you can grow on all sides. Again, depending on what trellis you purchase, but mainly the aesthetics, right? They come in all sorts of funky shapes, forms, materials, you know, you can grow it like these nice circles. I feel like always there, I see these Hoyas growing in like a circle in a pot and that looks super cute, right? So that is probably the main advantage and they're so easy to be produced. You get them everywhere. There's like hundreds, hundreds of options online. So a great ease of acquisition as well. But it's mainly the aesthetics, I think, is what people purchase these for because they add a little bit of interest in themselves, right? They can be almost like an artwork in themselves and of course there's very little effort required in maintaining it you just purchase it you pop it in the pot and then that's it i would recommend a veggie trellis if you want to grow well <laughs> veggies duh or even ornamental veggies like the discoria discolor basically a plant that doesn't necessarily grow aerial roots right these sort of aeroids with their aerial roots are perfect to grow these aerial roots into the moss pole and then develop a large root system discoria discolor would not grow any aerial roots in the first place for the discoria discolor, the moss would probably be too moist. It would probably just rot. I mean, not that I've ever grown one, but hoyas come to mind when it comes to these sort of trellis. Um, what else? Can't really think of anything else, but if you are aiming at growing aeroids and you want to grow your aeroids really nice and large, don't think a veggie trellis is really the way to go. Um, I think all the other supports would suit you better, but I wanted to include it because, well, it is technically a vertical support and there is a time and a place for the veggie trellis, but I think tropical aeroids isn't the time and a place. And lastly, we've got wood. Here we go. Bring this slightly closer over here. You can definitely see this plant has grown roots kind of, they're like semi-attached. Probably doesn't show at all. This is probably this specific iron bark over here, but we can also include planks of wood and whatever. Probably the closest to nature, right? Because as I mentioned in nature, these plants grow up trees and well, this is part of a tree. So a very close to nature experience for the plant. So yes, it is a vertical support, but wood in itself is not an extension of the pot. While we are trying to mimic nature, we do need to just understand our short, shortcomings, right? We are growing them in the pot. The pot is going to be limited in size and eventually it's gonna outgrow the pot and eventually it's also out, outgrow our space, specifically height-wise. So we are not true to nature. In nature, nobody needs to propagate these plants every year or so to keep them in check. They're just gonna grow wild and they have basically unlimited space to grow up these trees. We don't have unlimited space indoors. So while yes, we're aiming for a true to nature experience, we do need to consider the shortcomings. And the moss pole compensates so well for our shortcomings indoors by offering all of these propagation benefits. It's not an extension of the pod. It doesn't need to be watered. So I don't need to look for any moss alternatives and it has no water retention. I mean, the bark can retain a little bit of water, but very insignificant in the grand scheme of things. However, if the bark stays moist, I grow this one outside, for example, and it just gets rained on by, by mother nature. The roots can attach themselves to the bark, um, specifically if it's moist, because I suppose that's what they would do in nature as well. So you don't necessarily have to support the plant in addition to that, or you don't have to guide the plant up there. The plant can technically do it by itself, but it also depends on your growing conditions 
and the type of wood that you're using. If you're treat, using a treated piece of wood, for example, it might be that the roots can't actually attach to it. Um, and if you're growing in really low humidity, aerial root growth won't be encouraged and it might never grow aerial roots or these aerial roots might not actually anchor themselves into the wood. So it might not be able to attach itself to it if your conditions are suboptimal, but in theory, it is what plants attach to in nature. So I will still give it a green. Now I mentioned before, it's not a growing medium, so it doesn't have the propagation benefits, but I would actually go one further. It doesn't just not have the propagation benefits. I actually had an instance with a variegated monstera where it grew up its piece of iron bark beautifully, reached the top, and then I wanted to propagate it because, well, variegated monsteras were fairly expensive at the time, and I wanted to make a bit of money back from the investment that I put into that plant in the first place. So I chopped in between every node, and then I try to remove it from its current support so I can pot it up or propagate it, pot it up, sell it and so on. And because the roots have so like thoroughly rooted into the little crevices within the iron bark, um, all of the roots kind of got ripped in half, right? So half of the root got stuck on the iron bark and the other half was still stuck on the cutting that I had. So basically all of these ripped roots then died instantly and I had to start from scratch. I ended up having six to eight unrooted variegated monstera cuttings and if you've ever tried to root a variegated monstera cutting, they're notoriously hard to propagate in the first place. So it didn't give me propagation benefits, it actually really messed up my propagation game. So I give this a huge red. Uh, and I think this is something huge we need to consider. It also can't really be extended. I mean, technically it could, I can choose another piece of iron bark. I would probably have to kind of drill it onto the other one. Like there would be some sort of substantial structural support happening here. Uh, it wouldn't be as easy as just stake it on top of there and connect it via a cable tie. So I wouldn't necessarily say that these pieces of wood or the iron bark and so on is really designed to be extended. I've seen people kind of just use huge planks of wood and they just put it behind the pot. They don't really put it into the pot. They just put it behind the pot and then let the plant grow up. But that also means you can never move it ever again. Like if the plant is growing on a plank and the bottom of the plant is attached to a pot, but the plank and the pot are not connected, then aren't you just at some stage just going to rip those two apart? I don't really know. Doesn't really make sense to me, but each to their own. And because it can't be extended, it obviously also can't be chopped and extended, but technically you could air layer the plant. You know, I've got all of these roots over here. I could pop like a little, uh, I could pop a bag with moss over it, wait for this to propagate and have more roots and then do a little chop and hope that I don't rip this root off the iron bark. Now, another huge disadvantage of this is that wood is just very heavy, right? If you compare that to a moss pole that weighs hardly anything, a wooden pole is really heavy. You won't really have that free stem. I mean, this one is still very small and skinny, right? But I'm thinking about these thick wooden planks uh, that I've seen online. Uh, can make it very, very unstable, specifically if you go a little bit larger and if you go a little bit thicker and so on. So, I mean, it is just the heaviest out of all of these supports. And when it comes to being heavy with a narrow base to stand on, vertical, I just have to give it a red for stability. However, you could technically grow another plant up here. You can also sometimes find like nice little round branches in the first place. And then you have like some, like four or five Adansonia cuttings growing all around it. I've seen it at nursery. So you can create really nice, 360 degree displays uh, around these pieces of wood or uh, like branches and so on. So definitely a green tick for that one. And of course its biggest advantage is probably the aesthetic, specifically the iron bark. I think the iron bark has the great, the best aesthetic out of all of the poles because it is looking true to nature. Right? Um, don't necessarily like these planks of wood that you, looks like you just found them on the side of the road. But aesthetics is personal preference, so keep that in mind. This is just my, uh, my, my take on things. Ease of acquisition, it depends on what you're aiming for. 
This iron bag was actually quite expensive. I had to Google it and I've only found one seller on eBay and it was quite expensive getting it shipped over here. Other pieces of wood could be easier to source. You know, you might even go to the hardware store and get some of it for free if they have it left over and so on. But also make sure that it's not being treated with any chemicals and so on that could kind of negatively impact the plant. So ease of acquisition, I give it a yellow because it depends on what kind of wood you're aiming for. Um, but it should be easy enough to, to find it. And of course, there is no effort required. You're not supposed to really keep this moist or water this or whatever. So the effort is the exact same if you're using, if you're giving this plant a pole or if you're just growing it in a pot. There's no additional effort involved because of the support. So my recommendation for using iron bark is using it outdoors. I have this plant growing outdoors. I think outdoors it makes sense because most pots outdoors can dry out quite quickly so I don't have that issue with this uh, plant in the first place. So I'm not aiming for that in the first place. Also this plant gets decent conditions out there and heaps of light so I'm reducing the internal spacing so it won't, it will take as little as possible to actually climb up this. If you're growing this indoors and you have a lack of light the plant is going to grow with large internal spacing which means it's going to reach the top of this pole really quickly and then what? We don't have the propagation benefits of this so I think that is the biggest downside of the last three supports that I showed you. What are we gonna do by the time the plant reaches the top of the pole? We're basically forced to pretty much start from scratch. If you start from scratch, you just have massive setbacks and so on. And that's maybe fine. Maybe some people want that. But I personally always aimed at continuously maturing my plants. And just because my ceiling height forces me to have to cut the plant, doesn't mean that I need that plant to have a huge setback when it comes to maturity, leaf size and so on. And that is done by the chop and extend process. And the chop and extend process relies on the pole being extension of the pot, having a huge root system within the pole. So for me and what I want to achieve and the way that I like to care for my plants, the amount of time that I'm willing to put into this hobby, moss poles is by far the best approach and then I just toss up between well whereabouts is the plant going to be is it uh, is the pole visible from all sides do I want to create a lush display uh, or not uh, what's the conditions that it's in to determine whether I go for an open or closed moss pole but that's kind of my thought process but different people have different priorities have different goals and have different willingness to put in the effort so I hope this video kind of explains the differences of these five types of supports I'll pop in my little matrix over here so you can also take a screenshot of that and then maybe that matrix will help you assess what support would be best for you based on what criteria is most important to you. Hopefully this video at least gave you all of the information that you need to then make a decision that works for you, your plants and your environment. I'll wrap it up here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Please give this video a thumbs up and share it with people that you think could benefit from this information as well. Happy growing and I'll see you next time. Bye.